Hello and welcome back to another episode of Appaloosa Plains. I'm Robbie of the McFly Variety and today we're going to be doing well, nothing on this. We, we did a lot of pedestrian work in the past uh, episode and it's definitely doing very well. Um, like we did at the end of the episode, I showed off a lot of pedestrian paths. I went back and fixed some more trees up. But today we're going to focus on this farming industry it doesn't really make sense where it's placed anymore before it was kind of like i kind of thought it would work but now our high density has really made its way up to the edge and like why would someone who's working in this office want to look over some farmland it doesn't really make sense so we're going to upgrade this today give it a little bit of a high tech kind of vibe going on by uh doing some what do you call these again greenhouses we're gonna do some greenhouses when it comes to these. Um, something I would expect to see when it comes to producing food inside of a major metropolitan area. Would, I, would you consider this a metropolitan area yet? Or would what we're doing up here become a metropolitan area? It's a good question. But either way, we're going to upgrade this today, um, make it look like it's very much so meant to be here. So to get started on that, we're gonna have to, uh, Go ahead and dezone all of this. I don't think we're gonna keep any of this zoning anymore. It's it's a lot of it's a lot. Everything's been cleared. Uh, <laughs> this traffic's still trying to figure out what it's gonna do with itself. I'm not expecting this road map, this road layout to stay. Um, let's let's create some history for this, right? Say that these were the old farms from before the metropolitan area, you know, started up and. As the uh, land value in the area rose and the taxes became higher, the old farming company really had to make a decision. Did they want to revamp their entire company or sell their land off to someone else who has more of the means in order to do this? So I think they may have, uh, I think they may have just cut their ties, taken the money they could out of this, found a lovely home over here in the in the countryside, in the little town of whatever you want to call it, whatever we call it in the future, and so, just sold it off. They, now they get to live the rest of their lives out in the middle of the countryside where they really do enjoy the farm life, and maybe they just have a little farm to take care of themselves, right? They, they grow their own crops and they're happy where they're at, but they still have access into the metro area that does allow them to have a little bit better quality of life when it comes to uh, better goods or some kind of entertainment value they get to come into town because now they have all this money right they sold off the land for a much bigger price than they ever bought it for so they can come in do some lavish lifestyle things go to the theater um, check out the local leisure district where they can go bar hopping with all their friends because I know some people who are real real elders who still party like they're 25 in their small towns. Um, I come from a small town. It's kind of inevitable. But there's our story. The land's been sold off. And the next company is coming through. And they know that they want to continue to use this for industry use. Some more farming land. But they need to upgrade it. Really make sure it fits within the area we're in. They have great connectivity to the local area, everywhere, all around, especially an excellent connection directly to the highway. So this is really just going to be wildly beneficial for them. So here we go. We're going to create our new industry area. Um, what would this new company be named? BDND D Industries. Some really good uh, friends and old co-workers, Brittany. Daniel and Dustin Industries. I uh, thank you guys for being just good friends and following this and supporting me with this. I'm gonna name this after you guys as a little homage to uh, us working together for the time being, but I'm still keeping up with y'all now. So, Brittany, Daniel, and Dustin, they, they definitely know how to do a lot of things all at once. So, we're going to do the farming industry, but we're also going fame farm main building. This just doesn't look like a farm main building for a high tech and high tech industrial area, but we're still going to utilize it. Um, 
let's think about the way we want to do this. This is a good entrance point over here. And we could say we just put it there. This is how they make themselves, well, I think I like it. It's more of just an off set spot, right? But like I was saying, we got the, uh, we, they, they definitely do a lot of different things, especially when it came to what we, we all worked on. We all did a couple different things at all times. So, first of all, vertical farm seems perfect. In a biodome, the, a variety of endangered plants, insects, and birds find refuge in these climate-controlled structures. Visitors get to explore a completely different ecosystem without having to travel around the world. Animal species that might otherwise go extinct can, can live safely and peacefully while receiving the care they they need to survive. This sounds right up all of their alley. <laughs> so, what if we considered this like uh, the farm decided to do something a little bit local? Like, I think of um, back in Atlanta, they have in, they have uh, farming industries that actually do tours for the local city, um, or like the paper factory that like you could literally walk through the actual paper factory, learn about paper, how it's made. So, we could do something like this, kind of like a, uh, a, 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 a an ability for the locals in the area, this will bring in some more revenue for the business, and they can just come explore and learn about, there's four entrances, we can work with that, come and learn about um, other endangered species and stuff, and that sounds something like right up Brittany's alley she loves nature she loves connect connecting with things like that and I'm sure she would love to give a metropolitan area uh, an experience to be able to do something like that now we can also come to these vertical farms these make sense on this edge a little bit too much but do this recycling center only has four trucks out right now and I have some low I have some there's one in here one in here and I think we have a few other ones dotted around that are the smaller variety so we're gonna remove this recycling center and then this fire helicopter depot I think the city would have said we needed to make sure we keep something like this in the area but maybe we can just reorient it so that's how we're going to clear that out and we can come back and get these vertical farms here, right? This is something that makes sense for the edge of a city to me. We have some vertical farms, a way to be able to put some more stuff in. Let's say one, uh, you can do two and three. And those are expensive, aren't they? Cool. Some vertical farms overlooking the area, helping with uh, the flow back. Maybe a little bit of pop up from the flow down, but it's okay. Okay, so I would think that because of this like idea of tourism coming in a little bit more, we would also update our roads. But before we go and update our roads, I th think it's a good idea to go ahead and come in here and get our uh, greenhouses started up. This land is a little, a little shaky, isn't it? Where's my? Oh boy, yeah, that's got a big old dip in it. Think we're gonna fix that real quick we're just gonna go ahead and let's remember you know they, they they had a lot of money to spend on this they were the up and coming uh what do you call that competition that was always looking to be able to buy out this company so that they could bring the b and d and d <laughs> uh services to this area from another region Let's call it that right so we can now <laughs> they were able to but what I'm getting as they were able to you know upgrade or to uh, terrain what do you call this grade grade separate create grade something like that they were they were able to afford that so they filled in this space brought in some fresh dirt maybe even that means that we have a little bit more natural resources going on here there we go. You get even more natural resources going on because they brought in all that fresh, fresh dirt. We can fill in this area with all this fertile land. And it's all thanks to B and D and D Industries for coming to town. Right? So now we can grab our super large ones. 
see here, I'm thinking right here and here. We can kind of fill this space back here with something else and get our greenhouses going. Greenhouse and greenhouse. We definitely need to get some trees, some tree uh, versions in here. We want to keep some aspect of the roads in place, but maybe some of these just really need to be changed. Like this road, we should have probably straightened. Probably go ahead and straighten up. Nope, 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 nope. Don't do that. Stay on the ground. Just like that. Come. Really? <laughs> There we go. Does that still have its node there? You can remove that real quick. Cool. And you can straighten this all out, right? And I think we would keep this one because it's already kind of a main spot. And I'm putting down these old roads here, but I think we want to go ahead and start up with these new ones that we would come through. But what roads would we use? All right, so I'm, I'm going to go with these. They're called suburban street roads. But my thought process here is, well, one, I can draw some lanes in this, and I can do that in a little bit of a, a quick time pass. But my thought on it is that, you know, we got big semi-trucks coming through this area, right? And we want them to be able to have all the room to turn and turn into buildings if they need to and stuff like that. The only downside is that we have we need these roads to also be um, they still need to stay four lane, but the ones that don't need to stay four lane can do can just go to these road types. So we can just swap this out. It's it's interesting to have to change all the roads up after you've placed them all down. Let's let's take it a little bit slower. We can come in here and add some of these buildings in right there, there, and maybe we put one right here in the middle it's kind of like a separation and then actually thinking about it could take some kind of path down there so let's exit that where did my building go and why is it doing that there it goes put this here this like that and greenhouse we have two blocks worth of space I don't think I want to take a two, two block? What, what would you call that? Two meter? I don't think I want to take a two meter type of thing down the middle of that. Just a regular path going through should be just fine. And maybe I should also think about parking in this regard, right? So like, there's a lot to think about here. There's so many details. I'm not sure I'm a biggest fan of that one. I want something more updated, a little bit. Uh, fresher but still appropriate for an industrial area so what do we have downtown garage it almost fits perfectly if it wasn't for the greenhouse which no it's not going to fit there being that this comes in right here that kind of makes sense for that too so and it is that cheaty <laughs> that's a lot of <laughs> That's a big amount of, um, okay. This one's it's a little bit smaller. It has just the one <laughs> circle of influence. But this one, just a generally bigger, it adds more parking to an area you would think would need it. I think we're gonna do this one. All right. The industrial parking area. Maybe down this road here, we can upgrade it to this. Like I said, we'll be able to put our own lane markings in. We can upgrade that one in too. Did this node not go? No, it did not. Cool. All right. So there we go. So this is all developing. I'm thinking some nice trees and bushes throughout here, but not too many so it doesn't destroy the fertile land. And with that, maybe a few little offices could fit in this space. Now, what kind of office type is in this? What are we... 
what uh, what uh B and D Industries? B &D? No, they're under Garland Square. So what does Garland Square have? Is there anything about offices in here? Uh, agricultural, especially. Nope. But the uh, the zoning for commercial is local and organic produce. So maybe it would also make sense to go ahead and throw in like one of those. Because, you know, they got their produce directly from the farm. That kind of makes sense to me, I think. Alright. And just keep going. So, I'm going to go ahead and update this. Actually, we have a new version. Bring it, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, back, back. Uh, we're... I want to, I want to start using this. Eventually, I'm going to have to go through and, um, replace all of the other roads in the area. Where, there it is. It just looks so different. There we go. No longer just an industrial area. We have to think about the way things look. Is this gonna... Huh, looks good. Cool. I can probably... Yep, without issue. Oh, thank goodness. But I'm gonna have to fix the TMPE part. Alright, yeah. We got our new central road here. I think we'll just continue this one like this, but then this, no, we'll just, there's plenty of entry there, and that, come through here, there, and we can also find our brand new three lane in road. Alright, so I was just looking through a whole bunch of other buildings to see what else really catches my attention. And this one, being a research center, I think fits in with the story quite nicely. Although that cut doesn't really fit very nicely, right? So, the this is a research center. Uh, what was it called exactly? Let me double check that. The re research center. Uh, scientists from all over the world gather at RDC to develop the latest technology technological advancements. The research center houses a multi multi dis, 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 disciplinary staff of engineers, biologists, chemists, and mathematicians. RDC hosts many science-related conventions, which attract a host of highly educated researchers. I like the sound of this because they're researching farming stuff, right? They, uh, they brought this here. They knew that it was going to be a part of it. Brittany, Daniel, and Dustin are just so clever as to bring something like this into an area like this. <laughs> wow. And, um, just need to get it fit very precisely, which I think I just did. Yes. <clears throat> so now that I got this placed perfectly right, they are coming here, they're part of researching for the biodiversity of the world and these vertical farms and how can they best utilize biodiversity and these technological advancements in order to be able to help a large population of people. And it works even, it continues to work um, because of this, you know, eco-friendly area. I just fixed that sewage issue and um, I just need to hit play for a second. The uh, it, it just it makes sense to me here plus it has amazing connectivity by tram in one two and three locations so I think that just makes sense to me personally um, in trying to find more buildings that will fill out all these spaces so I think we're gonna try to fill it out with some offices but I th think to do that I'm gonna have to start by coming in here we already we already have the high-rise band good and we're going to have to watch out for the, uh, the buildings that get placed. I kind of want to put IT just for the modern look, but maybe it would be best to just go ahead and let it be regular offices. And we can put a dash, just a small dash of commercial in these spaces. I'm thinking maybe like this two by, no, maybe 
this 2x2 two two and this 2x2 two two would be good for commercial spots. But then we can utilize like this and this for some office space. And we can do the same thing here with... I wonder if the two two by buildings would look good here. I'm hopeful. Let's just do that to get some variation. Um, maybe do that instead. And then we can just, I think we should just green this up. And I'm thinking about a uh, pseudo park in this space for all the tourism that would be happening right here. Now, of course, tourism is going to happen here too, but it's within range. So it's okay. I am, and I'm thinking three is just fine there. So with that, let's get some decorating done. Wait, hold up a minute. Just realized we have a, a bunch of garage doors on the back of here. And I have this lovely new mod that allows me to move the spawn points around. So I think we're about to uh, take full advantage of that. And come in. Well, I guess we can just delete that segment. And come in here. Grab these little alley roads. And use move it to get it exactly in place. We grab our lovely spawning tool here, we'll add a point, right? Now I don't know if there's a way to just like drag it, but this is as much as I've played with it so far, right? So we can take that right there, bring the angle around, and I might, well, let's do that. And we'll take it to this door so they have more of a reason to use that little stretch of road right here. And what do we want it to do? Duplicate point, copy point, paste point, paste point, apply, append, oh, what? Add vehicle type. So we want to add the cargo trucks to this. And let's say garbage trucks. Those two make sense to me. Disaster response copter. Yeah, everything else can come to the front. Disaster response coming to the front also makes sense. Take out the garbage truck and the cargo truck. Fire truck, hearse, police, taxi. I think this makes sense. And we'll go ahead and apply this to all building types in the city. Now, does that mean that it also affects medium buildings back here? Medium fruit greenhouse? So let's let's go let's go in here. This point is this point in place too far from road for the same work. Yeah, let's just yeesh um reset to default that specific building. And I don't think I have another one of those buildings in the area, so we should be good. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited by this. I'm really, I'm really, really excited by this. Now, let's do our park.
I think this is a very beautifully decorated area. It's really nice for the tourism that would come through here and you know just want to experience the area but it's right up against this industrial space that of which is completely clean i don't believe that there's i don't even think it's possible to have any kind of where is is this no noise pollution is different from pollution pollution here it is yeah nothing nothing that would pollute anything in this area so i think that this being in this space looks really good i was really happy to find that um you can unlock the little paths here and turn them into concrete. They're not perfect, especially this one directly on the front. They're both faced the same way, so there's a big old light in there, but you don't see it that easily. But all the other ones, there we go, never mind. This one back here is messed up too. But it's a nice, it's a pretty area, surrounded by some good greenery. And um, the only other thing I have to do is let the, let the buildings build in, uh, all the zoned buildings that is, and put down some line markings. Won't you look at that? <laughs> While I was doing a whole lot of detailing, uh, we went ahead and leveled up to the next uh, level achieved <laughs> um, as acclaimed. We now have a trade school auditorium, a trade school bookstore, and a trade school laboratories. And we have a sponsorship deal? Uh, okay, so that's for the varsity sports. Cool. And we have an academic work created. That is awesome. How far away are we from... Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. How far away from, from uh, hitting the highest level are we? I think we're one away. Our campus attractiveness needs to pretty much double. So that's going to be next episode stuff. Our students need to rise about 500. Interesting that it doesn't... Okay. And our academic works, we need six more academic works it's gonna make us work for it isn't it it's really gonna make us work for it it's gonna be a while before we get that that absolute top spot uh with negative 350 i'm not going to up that any further but what is decreased upkeep cost okay we're going to decrease the upkeep cost and then change billboard change from varsity team's logo to sponsored brand I I mean, it's just an aesthetic thing at that point, isn't it? So, yeah, we'll work more on what we're going to do with this area in the next episode. Today, we're, we're keeping focus here, and I'm just about done. I think some negative space in here is kind of needed. I don't need to fill every single nook and cranny, but I want to look at it like this. <laughs> there is a lot of detail done here as we can see every single crosswalk has been laid out with these very simplistic style and every road now has some lines in it we uh, we added a new silo here and put in some uh, one-way roads this one also is now a one-way road just to help the silo keep going as you can tell the traffic's doing perfectly fine without it and um just really got these lanes marked out very cleanly very nicely this i'm considering this like one big intersection right which i love that this road doesn't have a center point because then i can do stuff like this and it just looks nicer so yeah that's what we got going on and i went ahead and did the main road here too so we now have this only goes out that direction and only goes straight but yeah all the uh, intersections were cleaned up organized a little bit better they're cleaner now this one's kind of the same deal you know sidewalks only on the outer side why would you need to pass in there um i just really really love this it looks so good i think it fits very nicely um the last few things i'm going to have to worry about in the kind of the flow out is going to be filling these two little spots here probably this little spot too these will get higher these will get medium and um that's about it <laughs> this one's been super fun to do the traffic's doing very really well and our industries are already up to level three coming so close up on level four we just need some more workers uh turns out i need to actually add more buildings <laughs> this might be where it caps out because i don't know if i want to add any more buildings i'm pretty happy with what we have here um our profit it's not insane but we're improved logistics i think we can do that um 
safety at work is supervised more carefully with strict standards and regulations. Increased workers' health cost one credit per affected worker. How big is that? Well, no, that would be 500, right? And then advanced automation. Robots and other automated systems make the production fa process faster and more accurate. Increased production output by 10%. Increased budgets, increased buildings upkeep by 10%. I think that one's also worth it. I'm watching this number down here, seeing what it's doing. It's not really going crazy, so I'm, I'm okay with all three of those being put in place. So, I think in order to be, to come from here and go into another uh, industrial area, we probably won't build, like we probably won't like extend the, uh, what do you call this, the district? What, what would you really call this? The in industry area. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to just take the industry area and stretch it all the way over here and like make a, like a, an, a satellite campus for the BD&D. I'm thinking that we're going to do a server production, um, server industrial production center, something like that. And that's where I'll put a whole bunch of these buildings for um, the slaughterhouse and the, you know, the flour mill. Um, cattle shed and milking parlor uh these these ones that add a bit more of the pollution aspects and i, th yeah, I think that just kind of makes sense what's this that one's almost full because i was just thinking about these they're balanced and full and i think that's pretty darn good i really enjoy this i think it looks super awesome it makes a lot of sense for the area that it's in um being all these like more industrial looking buildings the greenhouses just fit in a bigger built city area and i think these extra buildings coming into play around the edges and the offices mixed throughout also really help with this look of city center food production industry you know kind of thing including this um car park even though it may ha have a bit of issue with the, with its radius of influence, I it just it really fits the aesthetic very nicely here. Um, and yeah, I, yeah, I'm just super happy. <laughs> with that, we're gonna put an end to this episode, guys. Thank you guys for being here. I'm super excited to get the next parts taken care of. Um, we're probably gonna wait a little bit on the college kind of wanting to come over here and uh do a similar aspect to the farming area like maybe maybe one of uh maybe Brittany, daniel or dustin also come over here and in, in their own you know interest one of them kind of separates off and sets themselves a little bit of a second secondary business while they're still involved here they also have their thing going on here um and that's kind of where the Sarver Productions comes in. You know, Sarver wanted to take take all this stuff and produce, you know, goods themselves. So they developed their own production company that, you know, the other two weren't in, interested in doing. They just wanted to continue to make goods and sell them to other production companies. I think that's a super interesting way to go about the history of how this area is developed. And, um, yeah that's just that's super cool <laughs> so yeah guys thanks for watching this one like comment subscribe and i'll see you on the next one bye now